I'd now like to welcome Neil Short of Bournemouth Council. Neil has been a member of Bournemouth Council's climate team for many, many years and has worked on education, race reduction, home energy, and many more. Thank you. Right, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'll take you back to the place where Anthony started as well, back in 2019. Um, our council declared the climate and ecological emergency in response to public pressure, the school strikers coming to the town hall and uh, demanding that the council take some action. And remember, in 2019, we were a brand new council. That's when BCP council was formed. So one of the very first things they did was to declare an emergency. I find it useful not to talk about emissions, not to this group because you know all about that, but in general um, it's a bit of a turn off, it's a bit scientific, people think oh emissions it's science, it's gas, it's, yeah okay. Um, so I, I tend to focus on this is what's going to happen. Um, and as some of the speakers have, have already done today. Um, and it's not that far into the future. When I started talking about this a few years ago, we had to look back decades to examples of what climate change was going to be like, what the scientists were telling us. Now, we just remember, well, today, yesterday, last week, last month, and so on. So it really is happening right now. The floods, the heat waves, the storms, we had three in quick succession, causing loss of life, denying tens of thousands power, so three of those in succession, um, and biodiversity as well, a key part of our emergency, the ecological word. Again, it's been mentioned already today, so I won't harp on about it, but we need a healthy natural environment if we're going to stand any chance of tackling this emergency. So what have we done since 2019? Um, we compiled a list, a draft action plan, and took it to council and said, what do you think of these? Um, and there were lots of actions on that, 153 actions. Uh, and some of them have come to pass since that time. In fact, two-thirds of our list are either finished, ongoing, or moving the right way. Things like this. We've got a green infrastructure strategy. This sets the scene for how we're going to have urban forests, urban greening, taking care of biodiversity, getting the investment to help us do those things. We have a local cycling and walking infrastructure plan. It sets out, it's another plan, but it sets out um, how we're going to invest in cycling and walking. And as, as we heard earlier from the speakers, urban areas, particularly city areas, the people living there have a, a much lower, significantly lower carbon footprint than in rural areas because we're in close proximity. We should have all the public transport infrastructure there. So we don't need to create such a large carbon footprint. We have schemes like LEAP. This works, <coughs> this works uh, across BCP and Dorset, uh, where people, if they have a, an income of below 32,000 pounds, can have a free home visit from an energy expert getting advice, getting goodies, lots of free things there, and access to grants. Here's one grant scheme. Anthony mentioned other grant schemes that are out there working now. Energy companies have their own. The government sometimes funds them. But there are lots of opportunities for people to get the very basic things, like cavity wall insulation, loft insulation, and so on. And we're working together with Dorset on a scheme currently called HUG, which you will hear a lot more about where uh, we have been successful in bidding for four million pounds worth of funding to roll out more of these improvements. And it can go a little bit further because it does include things like solar and heat pumps and so on. So we're working together on that. We have a Schools Environment Award. It's how we interest young people uh, in the issues that we want them to get active on, whether it be saving energy, saving water, recycling more, minimising waste, travelling sensibly, all the messages we're talking about today, all the things that we need to do, and they are so keen to get involved. So that's a, a brilliant method. We talked about homes. Um, in in uh, the BCP area, we are now starting to build passive house standard 
homes. These are the, the homes that are so massively insulated, heated by heat pumps, ground source heat pumps, solar, etc. Um, it's 90% uh, better, 90% uh, reduction in um, the emissions from, from a normal dwelling. So that is undoubtedly the way forward. Uh, EVs we've talked about, it's not the ultimate answer, but it's a step on the way to the ultimate answer. Uh, and we've got six refuse freighters. Uh, people wondered, can you actually power a dust cart to constantly go around the streets every single day collecting rubbish? Um, yes, you can, um, by, by electricity. We've got about 30 vehicles in our fleet altogether. That saves about 100 tonnes of CO2 each year. So we are one of mo moving forward uh, to get even more EVs. We have uh, a partnership that we have, um, we have started. It's not officially and formally active yet. I can see some of the members here today. Um, but uh, it's how we want to move forward, talking to large employers, talking to statutory bodies like universities, uh, the health service, and so on, because we all need to work together on this. Uh, you will have seen Beryl Bikes. Big success story, over a million miles travelled by Beryl users uh, around the conurbation. There are scooters as well now, of course, so get on your bike when you want to travel a short distance. Um, and again, the same as Anthony, we, we had some money from uh, the government in order to improve public buildings. We had £2 million uh, and we spent half of that on Pool Museum, which is that last picture just there. Um, it was um, our flagship project, lots of insulation, new windows, but importantly, it's a heritage building, so we can't just strap solar panels all over it. Um, the whole roof was replaced with solar slates. So if you get a chance to go along Pool Quay, do take a look at that. Uh, but the bottom line, it's all very well, we've done lots of beautiful things, but the bottom line is this. This is the number that, that you'll be looking at. Um, the numbers are slightly different, the area-wide numbers to the ones Anthony quotes, because these figures are from Manchester University, the Tyndall Climate Centre. Um, it's called scatter data, and the difference is that they try to estimate scope three. So that's the trickier scope. It's all the procurement uh, and emissions from outside the area um, attached to the things that we buy and the things that we use. Um, so figures are slightly different, but you can see um, the bottom figure here, we're down 3% from 2019. Now, it would have been bigger, it would have been 12%, but the government changed the way that they calculate some of the figures. And I'm not against that because it means they're getting more accurate. So they changed the way that carbon uh, is, is calculated when it's sequestered in grasslands and forest lands and so on. Um, so they changed the figures, but that's fine. So we're down 3%. We're moving the right way, but golly, we need to do so much more. Uh, and the top figure there is the council's emissions, so the operations um, and the council buildings and vehicles. Um, we're down 22% from 2019, but with the proviso, because we always have to say that some of that is due to us buying green energy, certified renewable energy, which we did uh, from 2019 to 2022. Um, so that's why the figure is 22 um, if we hadn't have bought energy, green energy, it would have been 13% reduction. Um, why have we stopped buying it? It's very expensive currently. Um, and we would rather put our money into generating our own. So that's the direction we're going to move in. Um, we have a new council. We mentioned elections. Um, of course, we had a new council um, from May this year. Uh, the administration changed. And, and so we are currently in the throes of sorting out our strategies and, and the direction that they would like to move in. And I said to our portfolio holder, Councillor Hadley, who some of you will know, I said, what do you want me to tell people about the way that we're moving? And that's what he said. Doing the right thing. Climate responsibility, financial responsibility, is how we're going to secure our children's futures. Very. If only he were here. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's pithy, it's direct, it's, it's no nonsense. And I think that's the direction we're moving in. And I will tell him you clapped. Um, with that in mind, we have a new corporate strategy, because strategies is where everything starts. It's where we sort of find our direction. Um, it's out for consultation now. It's brand new. You can find it on our website, so you can sit and Google it and have your say right now but not till I finish talking. Um, but sometime today, do have a look. 
uh, because this is where you can start to say, we want more cycling, we want more insulation, we want more greenery, and you can actually get it, get that message in front of decision makers. I've put a little arrow there because that's the mention of climate change. Oh, no one got excited. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that no one got excited. Um, okay, it's, it gets one mention, the actual words. However, when you start to look at the other actions, green jobs, improving wildlife, integrating communities, active people, self-sustaining, there's an awful lot about climate change. It's not just one thing. We don't need to talk about climate change. We can talk about the other good things. And the things in green are all linked to it, and they're about people and communities. So quality of life for all. Well, we won't have that if the climate changes too much. Skills and development and learning, that's for the green economy. Everyone wants to live in good quality, sustainable, affordable homes. They're energy efficient homes. Working with partners to make sure everyone feels safe, safe from climate threats. Involving communities in decisions and shaping services and having a say. Please have a say. And the last one there, working with partners to reduce the impact of the rising cost of living. And interestingly, a lot of the work we're doing now around climate and energy is linked to the fact that people can't afford energy. So if we can help the people to have better insulated homes, to use energy in a better way, be educated about how to use it, then we're going to be on our way to helping the problem. A strategy we took to, um, to Cabinet uh, just before the elections, so it hasn't been formalised yet, but the strategy did have this diagram in it, which some of the speakers have already mentioned. The Council in this is tiny. Our own emissions are pretty small. They're big to us, but to the, to the world, they're pretty small. Um, however, it's the control that we have over other things, um, the things that we buy. And, and that's not just the council, of course, it's every single one of us. The things that we buy matter. Um, we can shape the place, yes, with our cycle lanes and our restrictions and our, our rules. We can do that. Um, we can show um, innovative things, things that we've done to show other people they work and then they can adopt them. We can form partnerships, which I've mentioned, partnerships with other councils, other organisations with communities themselves and with groups, groups like yours. And we can involve and engage and communicate. And communicate is the thing. Because whether people listen to us or whether they listen to you or whether they listen to the government, they need to listen to someone and it has to be that clear, concise message that this is about our survival. So just some of the things that we have coming along down the pipeline, some of the projects that we're working on. Um, the first is the local nature recovery strategy. That's Dorset wide. We're working with the council, working with the Wildlife Trust, who are here today, I'm pretty sure. Um, and that is all about the crucial role that wildlife uh, and nature has in assisting us to tackle this problem. So that is a crucial document. Part of our no-nonsense approach is looking at solar, um, Dorset have done a great deal already, we want to do a lot as well, so we've started off assessing our buildings to try and see where we can use solar to best advantage. Something that's quite exciting coming along, a study on geothermal energy. Southampton have been using it for years, we're looking to see can we use it in our area. LAEP stands for Local Area Energy Plan. We don't fully understand the amount of energy we're going to need, where it could come from, Who's going to use it? Can we store it? Can it be renewable? So we're, we're commissioning a piece of work that will educate us uh, and hopefully assist the utilities, the power companies, the network operators in understanding energy use in our area. And finally, something else that you can have a say on is the local plan. Um, we had three because we were three councils. We are now drafting one plan. Uh, and we, I say we, the climate team, want the very best policies to be in it so that anything new that's built is built to the very best standard. So please do, when it comes out for consultation, have your say on that as well. And finally, thank you very much for listening. Brilliant turnout today. I'm so pleased to see you all here. Um, and thank you very much indeed to the organisers. Thank you. Thank you.